Okay, I've got your uh, previous SPM loaded. So let's load the uh, newest one. We go to import model. And it should be the one with the one in parentheses. So we select it and activate it. I'm going to set the uh, channel monitor down to nine channels so we don't see channels that we're not concerned about. And then I've got to bind it to um, my receiver so we can see your um, SRM settings in it. So I'll go to uh, the Spectrum Programmer, power up the receiver. Okay, let's bind the receiver to this model. Okay, now let's go through the controls in the monitor screen. All right, the throttle cut was off, so the throttle works, the rudder works, and nothing else is moving. The ailerons work, and the elevator works. Um, so the controls should move. So let's go into um, the settings. First of all, the uh, rudder trim is not zero. I'm OCD, I'd like to see zero there. You may have to turn the clevis a half a turn to where you can center that. Um, model setup, let's go to aircraft type. One aileron channel, one elevator, one rudder, good there. Um, flight mode setup is inhibited. That's good. We don't need it. Um, you do not have to use the transmitter's flight modes with the receiver's flight modes. They're not related. They can be, but they don't have to be. Uh, channel assign. So A defaults to 5. D defaults to 6 for flaps. You've got the... Uh, Receiver's flight mode channel, channel 7 on switch F. Um, I normally put it on B. You've got the push button assigned to channel 8 like it should be. The left slider is still working channel 9, but you don't have channel 9. So I guess you can't turn it off like I can. Um, I'm going to set this to B so that I will flip the right switch as I'm going through my explanation. Um, the RX port assignments are probably okay. Throttle goes to port one, aileron goes to port two, elevator to three, rudder four. Uh, the um, gears on five, aux one six, aux two is seven, aux three is eight, like it should be. No problems. Um, Okay, so I assume all the switches are set correctly. You haven't modified the digital or the analog switches. Um, so let's go back out to um, model adjust and servo setup. So you've got elevator reverse like you should. Um, everything else looks good here. I'm going to reverse. Um, aux 2 so that my B switch works the flight modes in the correct direction. Uh, travel, everything is set to 100 as it should be. You don't want to decrease these. It hurts the resolution of your radio. Sub trim, uh, on E-flight planes you can probably have all these set to zero. On 
third party airplanes, the servos may not center correctly and you need to adjust the sub trim so that the servo arms are perpendicular to the push rods. Speed should be set to normal. Absolute travel should be normal, 1 to 4096 or whatever. So we're good there. Uh, dual rates and expo. Um, I'm going to change the switch to B so that it works the way my airplanes work. You can use whatever switches you want, but uh, I put my refre receiver's flight modes and the dual rates on the same switch, which I'll illustrate why in a minute. So go to low rate, you got 51%. That's okay. Um, that airplane, you know, like I said before, I wouldn't go below 50, but you may want to raise this to 60. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, I would probably increase the Expo to 20. Um, and then uh, the middle position on my airplanes is high rates because the other end is safe mode. So this would be my high rates. And so I would set these to 100%. And then the Expo I would set to probably 25 or 33. The larger the ailerons are, the more Expo you generally need. So you could set this to 30. And then position two of switch B, uh, this is where I would have safe mode in my receiver and 100% is what you need in safe mode. Uh, I would raise these to 30%, the same thing that you have in high rates. Generally, when I go from high rates to safe mode, these don't change. They'll be the same. And then we'll go to elevator. And uh, I'm going to change the switch again on you to B because I put all of the rates on the same switch. So now I'm in low rate. And I would not lower the elevator that far. Uh, I have the elevator in low rate set to at least 75% and maybe 80% so that you have enough elevator and low rates to take off and land. Um, then the Expo probably with the um, larger elevator, I'd probably use 25%. Um, and then high rates, which is the middle position of B for me, I would set this to 100%. And then the Expo, let's see what low rate is. Yeah, 30 is probably good for this airplane in, in high rates. Uh, and then safe mode, this would be 100 so that you get the full uh, pitch limit angle. And then uh, I don't know what we used. What was it, 30? We'll go back and look. Um, so this is safe mode, position two. This is high rates, the same numbers. As you switch back and forth, they're the same. Low rate is a little less throw on elevator. Um, so... That's how I set mine. Let's go to rudder. And then this, uh, let's use, you use switch H. I use B for all of them. So I'm going to set it here so that when I flip the switch, it'll do the right thing. So I'm in low rate. Um, probably um, low rate, probably 75%. And then the expo. Uh, 25 to 30, that's fine. And then uh, the middle position on mine is high rate, so it'd be 100%. And then the expo would probably be um, 30 or 35. And then if we go to the position two, which would be safe mode, then I would want more rudder than that. I would set it about the same as low rates. I'd probably set it to 75. And then the Expo, I'd probably use 25 to 30 
we are in safe mode after all. Um, and I take off and land in safe mode, so I like a little less rudder uh, when I'm taking off and landing, so that I can, uh, have, you know, so it's easier to steer down the center line of the runway. So let's look at them again. This is low rate, which is 75 and 30. High rate is 100 with 30. And then uh, safe mode is 75 with 30. So that does that. And uh, let's see. So we did that. Throttle cut. Um, you're using what I use. Uh, you're using switch A, which is my retract switch. So I use switch H. I don't know if you're left-handed or right-handed or if you're flying mode one or mode two, but I use H because I'm right-handed and I don't like taking my hand off of the right stick when I'm flying. So my gear and flaps and rates are on the left side and my throttle cuts on the right side because I never reach for a switch while I'm flying on the right hand side. It's always my left hand. So there's no danger of me killing the motor if the throttle cut is on the right side. And uh, so that's how I do it. Now, the other thing is that um, I set the uh, throttle cut so that the motor is killed in position one and it's on when the switch is down or in position zero. That way, if I set the transmitter down on the ground or something and the grass uh, hits a switch, it will push the switch up and turn the motor off. Uh, you don't want to set the transmitter down and have the switch turn the motor on accidentally. So that's why position one is throttle cut and zero is motor on. And then on electric airplanes, you should turn this on so that if the stick is above idle and you turn the throttle cut off, the motor won't run until you pull the stick all the way down to idle and then push it back up. So that's an extra safety feature, mainly for electric airplanes. Gas engines don't really have that problem. Um, so anyway, so with the uh, switch H in position one, the throttle doesn't work. And with the throttle cut off, now the throttle works. So, and let's see, uh, throttle curve, you've got a switch assigned to it, but as you switch, flip the switch, it doesn't change. So I would just inhibit it. Um, so then uh, mixing, These are all set to zero and it's inhibited to make the airplane fly straight in uh, knife edge. I turn this on and then I'll add a little bit of correction. Um, if the rudder makes the airplane roll out a knife edge, I'll add some aileron mix. And if uh, the airplane goes toward the landing gear or toward the canopy, then I'll add some elevator to make it go straight when it's in knife edge with top rudder. So anyway, that's how I do that. And then uh, aileron to rudder is generally only used to correct for adverse yaw from unequal drag on the ailerons. Um, the programmable mixes are all inhibited, that's okay. So forward programming, so I gotta turn the throttle cut off, or on actually. All right, the other settings, they should all be good. Okay, let's look at the gyro settings, AS3X and AS3X gains. So flight mode three, 20, 30, and 40. Flight mode two, 20, 30, and 40. And flight mode one, which is safe mode for you, is 20, 30, and 40. So that's good. Priority, 160. You have to check this in each flight mode, make sure they're correct. And flight mode one, 160. They should be the same in all three flight modes, generally. 
heading hold um, should be all zeros. You have to check this in all three flight modes or however many you have. Um, gain sensitivity is set to 1x. Fixed adjustable should be fixed. You also have to check this in all three flight modes or whichever flight mode you're using AS3X and you don't have a gain channel or a knob for, for it. So that's good. Um, safe settings, safe gains, uh, flight mode three doesn't show anything because safe is turned off. Flight mode two, st same thing. And then flight mode one, we've got roll gain of 25 and pitch gain of 45, which should be pretty close. And then uh, angle limits in uh, low rate with AS3X, safe is off. In uh, high rates with AS3X, safe is off. So it doesn't show you anything. And then uh, safe mode on switch B, the way I use it, you've got your uh, bank limits. I would probably set these to 60 for an extra. And you have to set each one. And then I would use 45 for pitch up so that you can climb a little bit steeper and get over obstacles like trees and things. 30 down is okay. You don't want it to be too steep if you're learning. So that's probably how I would set it. And then fixed adjustable these receivers default to fixed and safe, whereas in AS3X they default to adjustable and you have to set them to fixed if you don't use the gain channel. Or you don't get any AS3X gain. Flight mode setup, we've already seen it switch flight mode, so we're pretty sure that it's set correctly. Channel 7 and switch B like I set it to. And the switch I is the uh, panic channel, so... That's good. And then low rates, um, AS3X is on, safe is inhibited, panic is active, and the mixes don't do anything. And then high rates, a mid position to switch B, AS3X is active, safe is disabled, panic is active, and the mixes are inhibited, don't need them. And then uh, flight mode, one, which is actually safe mode, uh, position two of switch B, the way I do it. Uh, AS3X is active, which it should be when safe is on. And panic doesn't need to be on because you're in safe. And uh, the mixes, I inhibit the high mix. I don't want my plane to climb at full throttle. and But I do use the low throttle to pitch so that it will lower its nose when I throttle back and maintain flying speed. So that's how that is set on mine. Uh, relearn servo settings since you reverse the elevator or anytime you reverse a channel to make the stick move the surf surface in the right direction you need to run the relearn servo settings you have to click apply and then complete and uh, it brings you too far out to me uh, because then you got to figure out how to get back to where you were and there we are you can run run you can run relearn servo settings and you should run it after any changes to the uh, servo settings in the transmitter uh, if you change the sub trim or um, the direction, you always need to run relearn servo settings and then verify that the sticks move the surfaces in the correct direction and then put it in safe mode and pick the airplane up and tilt it 45 degrees in each direction and make sure that when you lift a wing tip, that aileron on that side goes up. Um, and when you lift the tail, the elevator should go up to push the tail back down. Uh, the rudder is not controlled in safe, but it is controlled in AS3X. So 
it only moves momentarily when you turn the plane uh, and when you yaw the plane left or right. Orientation should be good. Gain channel select should be inhibited. We're not using it. Um, safe panic. Panic is uh, on channel 8 like it should be. And 30 degrees is fine. And then uh, throttle to pitch. The uh, threshold is 30% throttle. The gain uh, or the uh, angle will increase to minus 4 at idle. It starts at 0 at 30% throttle and increases to minus 4. And then the high throttle, which we have disabled in the flight mode settings, but um, I generally set this to 85 if I do use it, but I rarely ever put anything but zero here. Um, so anyway, um, when you throttle back, if the plane doesn't lower its nose enough, you need to make this a more negative number. And this is in degrees, so change it by two or three degrees at a time, not much more than that. Uh, or one degree when you get close. Um, and then um, attitude trim is very important. Should be zero in roll if the receiver is level in the airplane. Um, the pitch attitude trim, I like to set this uh, to five or six initially, and uh, I, I would rather my plane climb in safe mode on the maiden flight than descend. Uh, I don't like for it to be losing altitude all the time. Uh, I'd rather it uh, climb slightly. So uh, you never know what this number is going to need to be. I know you can, uh, they tell you to set the airplane level on the ground and capture these, but really you, you have to adjust these based on the way the airplane flies. What it does on the ground is irrelevant. Um, Airplanes fly at different attitudes in level flight due to wing incidents and uh, airfoil design, whatnot. So, anyway, those are um, those are good. Of course, this is where you click to capture it when it's sitting on the ground. But I never use that. I mean, I might use it on the first time I set an airplane up, but generally, I'm going to set this to zero and five or so. Um, so fail safe is set to flight mode four as it should be fail safe angles minus 20, which is a 20 degree left turn seven is nose up. Um, that may be too much, like I said, but, uh, at any rate, it's close enough. So let's see what else we have. Um, I guess we've done all that utilities don't use utilities. It's fine. So anyway, that's um, that's how I set it up. My recommended changes to the way you set it up. Um, I would save the settings to back up. If if you get the settings pretty close to what you want, save them to back up. And then if you make adjustments and you want to go back to what you had originally, you can restore from backup. Um, if you do factory reset, you're going to start over. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it. I got to thinking about the switch settings you've been using. Um, so if I were left-handed flying mode one um, to do a mirror image of what I do I'd go into channel assign and I would set the uh, gear channel switch H and the flap channel to switch E and the receiver's flight modes to switch G or F if you want to use it instead 
uh, whatever switch you use for your dual rights. And then the panic button, switch I is correct. So that's that. And then uh, go into model adjust and go to dual rights. And you'd use switch G or whatever switch you're using for the receiver's flight modes. Um, put them both on the same switch for aileron and elevator and rudder so that your rates and your receiver's flight modes are on the same switch so that when you go to a safe mode, your rates automatically go to 100%. Um, and in forward programming, doing the channel assign should automatically fix the uh, flight mode channel setup. And if you look at it, see it's still on channel 7 and the switch is G. So there's no need to come here and change it because the channel assignment screen will, will fix that. So that's about it. Um, good luck.